Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 24th chapter of the Gospel of St. Luke, verses 36b through 48. Listen and hear God's word for us today. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do, you doubt, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave Jesus a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. In our lection passage today, it is the evening of the day of Jesus' resurrection, and his followers have gathered in a room, a little afraid and confused. There were reports that Jesus had risen from the dead. Remember, the women told them that the tomb was empty when they arrived there. Peter and the disciple that Jesus loved confirmed that fact, and then Cleopas and another follower had just arrived there and shared that Jesus had walked with them on the road to Emmaus, and their eyes were open. And suddenly they recognized Jesus after he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them to eat. Multiple witnesses confirmed that Jesus had indeed risen from the dead, yet the disciples and others were still startled and terrified when Jesus appeared. He just showed up in the room. Who would not be terrified under those circumstances? When Jesus appeared, the disciples and the others thought that they were seeing a ghost, a spirit. After all, they had witnessed Jesus as he was unjustly tried and convicted. They witnessed him being beaten and forced to carry the instrument of his own murder. They witnessed him suffer and die on the cross, and they witnessed his lifeless body as it was laid in the tomb. And here he was on this third day, standing in front of them. Peace be with you. Those were the words that Jesus spoke to calm their fears and doubts. And then he offered his hands and feet for them to examine, to touch and see. Ghosts, they don't have skin and bones. The disciples were joyful, but they were still a little bit unbelieving and confused. So as an additional act of confirmation that he had risen from the dead, Jesus asked for something to eat, and he ate the broiled fish they gave him. Spirits or ghosts do not consume food. I can witness to the fact that there have been times in my life when situations seem hopeless, when I was afraid, terrified, and in despair. At the bed of my father as he died, when my son was serving in Afghanistan and Pakistan, when my mother no longer knew who I was as dementia had thrust her into a world of her own, when I received word that my brother, my only sibling, had died. Those were all moments of worry, despondency, confusion, and fear. Then the Spirit of God, our risen Savior, showed up out of nowhere and spoke peace into my situation, reminding me that God had promised to never leave nor forsake me, reminding me that God had brought me through danger seen and unseen before, reminding me that God had been the lifter of my head when all hope seemed lost. 
and that God would indeed see me through those things and other things that are yet to come. My witness is a firsthand testimony to the faithfulness, mercy, grace, presence, and love of God in our lives. Jesus, the risen Christ, reminds his joyous yet still unbelieving and confused disciples of the words he spoke to them before his conviction, just his crucifixion just three days ago, that everything that had happened had been foretold through the testimony of the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms, and God's word would be fulfilled. It must be fulfilled. Now that their eyes had been opened as they confirmed Jesus' physicality, Jesus opens their minds to understand the word of God. The Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. This was not a new revelation. Jesus had shared this with his disciples over and over and over again, that he had been sent by God not as a warring and avenging king, but as the anointed one who would suffer, be raised from the dead, and that in his rising he would overturn oppressive and unjust systems. In his dying and rising, he would break down systems of exclusion and marginalization. In his dying and rising, a new world order of repentance and forgiveness of sins was available to everyone of every gender, race, ethnicity, nationality, social or economic status, to everyone who sins. Thanks be to God. Then Jesus adds, you are my witnesses of these things. Jesus did not ask the disciples if they would witness. He did not leave the decision to the discretion of the disciples. He did not qualify it by saying if they felt like it. Jesus unequivocally declared, you are witnesses of these things. And I share with you that witnesses are testifiers. In a courtroom, witnesses are called to testify to what they saw and experienced, not what they heard or even what they think. Now, I know where I am and that we do not have testimony services at EOPC, and that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. However, in other worshiping communities, people will literally stand up during a worship service and talk about the goodness of their God. They will literally stand up out of their seats and testify to how God stepped into the messes of their lives, healed their sick bodies, mind, or spirit, or how God mercifully called someone to their heavenly home. In other worshiping communities, people will emotionally, publicly proclaim that God saved their child, their grandchild, husband, wife, cousin, or neighbor from destruction, or how God turned an unimaginable situation around. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. Testimonies confirm that God is in control of every situation in our lives, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And when we testify to what we have seen God do, how we have experienced God's saving grace, when we witness to how God turned thing, turn things around, we encourage and confirm to others that God can and will step into their life situations as well. You are my witnesses, Jesus said. I am sending you. I have authorized you to go forth. Testify and preach, not merely to share your personal opinions to deliver, to deliver the risen, risen Christ's authentic message to a dying, dysfunctional, warring, and divided world. I died and God raised me from the dead. I have overcome the sting and finality of death. I have ushered in a new era of forgiveness and the remission of sins. I have reconciled you back to God, our divine parent, and now you have the right to abundant and eternal life. You are my witnesses. Beloved, witnesses not only define who we are, but also influences how others see God to be. Matt Skinner proclaims, we are witnesses and it points to our calling as well as our commitment to it. 
We are witnesses, gives witness to our own selves, our own faith, our own belief, and that it is the hardest truth to hear that perhaps we don't believe in the identity God has given us, don't believe God needs it, don't believe others will see it, don't believe that it actually matters, all the while, therefore, renouncing God's expanded horizons and God's relentless attempt to expand our imaginations." End of quote. And then commentator Carol Lewis writes, I suspect that for many of us, hearing that we are witnesses is not necessarily good news. We remember how often we have declined our identity. We remember how often we have deferred testimony to others. We remember how often we have determined that our witness wouldn't make a difference anyway, so why bother? But in doing so, we deny the truth of who we are and who Jesus needs us to be. We give up affirmations and confirmation about God that not enough people get to hear or experience, and we forgo the fact that we are not never giving witness to God." End of quote. Did you catch what Carolyn said? We are not never, we are never not giving witness to God. How we walk in the world as the people of God, how we treat others, the words we speak or lift, left, leave unspoken, our actions and our inactions are all witnessing and giving insight to who, who God is or at least who we portray God to be. I stopped by this morning to tell you that when we remain silent, we walk, when we walk away from people who need an encouraging word, when we turn our backs on others who are struggling, when we decide that now is not the time or the place to talk about the goodness of God, that speaks volumes as well. Can I get a witness? Commentator Lewis contends that rather than continuing in our ceaseless attempts to convince ourselves that we have a choice, that we can carry out this occupation just as soon as we are adequately prepared, that we can graciously, even politely and respectfully, eschew God's claim on us. Why not try it on and see what it feels like? Wear it around. Maybe, it will even, maybe even with gladness in your heart. Fake it until you make it, she says, if you will. Who knows, maybe then we might start to believe it too. End of quote. Beloved, we are witnesses. Therefore, it is not dependent on our agreement or our disagreement. We are witnesses. Our readiness, responsiveness, or receptiveness are inconsequential. We are witnesses. Doing so is not optional, intermittent, or something that we can decide to do or not. Jesus did not ask. He instructed and declared to his frightened, joyful, and unbelieving disciples to go forth and witness, first in Jerusalem and then to all nations. And God's message to us remains the same. Go forth and witness to our family members. Go forth and witness to our community and our neighbors. Go forth and witness on your job. Go forth and witness to those that you pass on the street and to everyone that you encounter. Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Now can I get a witness? Yes. Amen.